Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite topic when it comes to VS, performance. We all love good performance. We all want performance to be better (laughs) when we're using Visual Studio, and I'm excited to share that it is getting better. So joining me today are two members of the Visual Studio team, got Nayana from the Visual Studio performance team and Hershada from the Visual Studio debugger team. Welcome, y'all. Hey, Leslie. So Nayana, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on in the Visual Studio 2022 performance space lately? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk about uh, all the performance uh, improvements that we have been working on. Uh, there are several areas where uh, Visual Studio has seen performance improvements. Uh, in 17.4, we have made significant performance improvements in several areas of Visual Studio. For example, uh, we have made performance improvement in GitHub by reducing solution reloads uh, during Git branch switches. Uh, In here, we reduce the number of uh, branch switches that need uh, solution reloads um, by an estimate of 80%. Uh, For example, uh, when a developer changes get much and reaches the main branch, the rest of the team would have experienced a solution load when switching to and from this branch. Now, after 17.4, this scenario should no longer prompt a solution reload. Uh, users should see a faster branch switching experience. In 17.4, there were there were a couple of improvements went in, but uh, one more uh, improvement uh, we released in 17.4 was improvement to the faster indexing of C++ files, uh, which resulted in, in uh, reduction in loading times for C++ projects. So there are a bunch of improvements that uh, released in 17.5 too. So in, in uh, uh, 17.5, Visual Studio has this cool feature uh, called build acceleration that developers can use to speed up uh, incremental build times for uh, SDK style .NET projects. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's optional and developers can turn it on if they want. Uh, what it does is, uh, the, instead of building every single project every time, you when you hit build, uh, it only builds the ones that have changes, skipping the unchanged projects. This can reduce incremental build times by up to 80% which is a huge time saver for uh, for developers. With build acceleration, developers can focus on their work and streamline their workflow without waiting for the whole solution to build every time they make a change. So apart from this, uh, there was uh, there is the one another area we improved the performance of uh, Visual Studio is decompilation. Uh, now, when you are decompiling large modules, you can do, do it up to 10 times faster than before. This is a great news for developers who work with a large code bases and and need to decompile modules frequently for debugging and troubleshooting. So it makes the whole process much more efficient and it saves time for developers. So in addition to this, uh, there is an improvement in threads window. Uh, the performance of uh, threads window in Visual uh, in in VS version 17.5 has been significantly enhanced. Uh, the window now uh, responds much faster, especially when debugging applications that have large number of threads. So we can see the demo of uh, these couple of improvements. Uh, we have Harshada who can walk us through this de- de- decompilation and threads window demo. Sure. So, um- I'm going to give you a quick demo on the threats window first. So as uh, Anna mentioned, uh, prior to 17.5, uh, we have seen some performance issues around the threats window, specifically when there are a larger number of threats window. And when we say larger, we're talking about thousands or 500s or more than that. Um, with all the new changes around the threats window, now when you try to load the threats window with the larger set of threads, it just shows you all the threads within split of a second. It's just give you all the information related to threads. Um, and you don't have to wait or you don't have you don't see any responsiveness issue with the threads window as well. So here I have a very small uh, demo which I just created for the threads demo uh, as here. 
Um, I have this threads window here, which does not show anything right now. I'm expecting to see at least 500 threads here, and you guys can see how quickly all the threads will load. So I'm going to pause and break my application, and we can see how quickly the threads all all the threads load in this threads window. So as soon as you pause your application, as you can see, it didn't even take a bit of a second, and you can see all the threads with its information loaded right away. And it's 504 threads, which was I was expecting. Mm. So this is very, very fast. Um, and it also loads, um, it also scales prefer perfectly, even if there are more threads in your multi-threading application. That so another, is, I, I haven't seen that improvement. <laughs> that is really nice yeah, to see. Yeah, so for the demo purpose, I have it 500, but we have tested it with the threads with thousands of numbers, whereas like with thousand, and we haven't seen any performance degradation there. It's pretty much the same for that as well. Yeah, that's really exciting. Also, is this window um, asynchronous, I'm guessing? So you can yes. go yeah. work on Great, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so the another demo which I'm gonna show from the debugging side is the decompilation. So let me switch to another demo here. So just to give a, before I give a demo, I have a brief information. So if you haven't noticed, with 17, uh, with actually with Visual Studio 2022, we have this external sources node here in the Solution Explorer. So this external sources node actually shows all the external libraries or uh, NuGet packages which are required or which are associated with your projects. And it shows all the loaded uh, and decompiled source under this node. And it makes it super easy when you're working with um, any of your external source code and you want to debug or put a breakpoint through it. In this node, you also see this modules without sources folder, which actually gives the list of all the available um, libraries, external libraries, but which are not loaded or decompiled. So with this uh, new improvement, we saw that there has been much more usage or much more uh, easiness around this uh, debugging with external sources. But we also noticed that there has been a little performance issue specifically when you're trying to decompile a larger size of a module. And when I say larger, it's, we are talking into MBs. Um, so to fix that, we have made a lot of changes around the decompilation or the way we decompile our modules in the backend. And we are, as Naina mentioned, we are able to get at least 10 times faster decompilation for such for the larger modules. So again, I have a very simple WPF app here with just a button. And I'm already running the application. Um, so I'm, um, I'm just going to pause my application. So I'm going to hit the breakpoint. And what I'm going to show you is how quickly we can load some of our larger external files. So another cool thing, if you haven't noticed, in the call stack window, you can see all the external sources call stacks as well. And you can hide that with this show external code button. So specifically, I want to show these couple libraries. The reason I'm selected these are these are pretty larger libraries. So the presentation core here, which we see is around 8 MB. The presentation framework we have is around 16 MB. And the Windows base is around 2 MB. So these are pretty large files. So now I'm going to try to decompile this. So when I say decompile, you can see how quickly we were able to decompile this file. And you're oh, able nice. to browse through the code and put a breakpoint if you need to. So let's go to our, the largest one, which I mentioned, the presentation framework. It's around 16 MB. And we still see the similar performance here. So um, as I mentioned, the decompilation has been super, super fast here. So the external courses, so external sources debugging is will be very easy. Um, and it's it will be as similar as we are doing. You're just working with your own code. So it wouldn't be any different. And you won't have to have any performance issues there. That is really exciting to see. I, I know y'all added external sources a couple versions ago at this point, which yes. I thought was really cool. But I and just from a sheer curiosity standpoint, wanting to look through your external sources, even if you're not necessarily having yes, that's true. Time. Like, yeah, I think sometimes you just try to learn something new from when you're looking at these libraries. Like there are mm -hmm. lots of things we can learn from that as well. Yeah, just to better understand like what's happening yeah. behind the curtain. Like, so it's nice that just opening one of these is not mm -hmm. going to be <laughs> as big of a hassle when yes. you're just wanting to explore and understand what's going on. Yeah, I think that's all I had from the demo side. 
awesome. Makes me more excited to debug, which people, you should be debugging and using cool debugging features in Visual Studio because they're awesome. <laughs> Just saying, not that I'm biased. <laughs> Um, great. So I'm excited to see how performance continues to improve. Nana, you also mentioned build acceleration, which sounds really awesome. Just the ability to uh, only rebuild the things that actually were modified because it's such overkill, especially if you have hundreds of projects in your solution, um, having to <laughs> do all the, this unneeded um, building. So Definitely, I'm looking yeah. forward to hearing more about that. Who knows? We might have a uh, a video about that in the future. Oh, well, definitely. Wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So, Nana and Rashada, where can people go to learn more about all the new perf editions that are happening? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, uh, we want to make sure uh, our users are aware of the performance enhancement, enhancements that come uh, every release of Visual Studio. So that way we include them in the what's new experience within the IDE for every release. And also we publish a blog post on performance with uh, with uh, every GA release cycle. So, you know, we, we are also considering feedback from developers community and also as well as the survey, uh, you know, to identify any the areas that needs improvement. So I would highly recommend, you know, the people to go ahead and create those the, the developer community feedback tickets and, and also fill up the survey for us. Awesome. Yeah, do go to the developer community. We do read them. It's not a robot reading your responses, right. we promise. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure a lot of the recent perf editions were the result of um, community feedback, right? Yes, yes. We, we constantly read those feedback uh, comments and also, you know, the feedback tickets uh, from, and also in the, in the comment section of the blog post when people come back and give their comments of the pain points that they are going through. And we, we kind of read those and sometimes we also prioritize those as, as uh, in our, uh, you know, backlog to work on those tickets. Awesome. Well, Nayana and Rashada, thank you so much for being on the show today. I know perf is definitely a hot topic for a lot of people. So I'm glad that we're having more opportunity to share what how we've been improving that space for them. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Sweet. So until next time, stay tuned for potentially another performance-related episode in the near future. But until then, happy coding. Mm -hmm.